Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art, and I help beginner through professional level artists reduce stress while mastering animal art. In today's animal painting tutorial for stress relief, we will be finishing up the pit bull painting that I posted part one of last week. We'll finish the background and I'll go over a review on my 12 step dog painting process. If you haven't started, I've linked part one down below for you, but those of you who have, let's get painting. All right, so I'm mixing up the colors raw sienna with a tiny bit of black, and we'll start painting the dirt on the ground where we have the gray. Now we're on step two, but we're going back to the background just because we want to add more to it. We can do that because this dog has short hair. Now, just like I talked about in part one, I'm gonna keep the right side of the ground darker, adding a little bit more black. And then as I move to the left, I'm gonna add less black and more raw sienna. And make sure you're using a large flat brush for this. We have a lot of surface area to cover. Make sure you take your time, have fun, and make this your own. Now just a reminder, especially to you beginner artists, at any point if your brush starts sticking and pulling on your canvas, that's a good indicator that you need to wash at your brush, get it clean and damp, and you just dab it on your cloth or paper towel, and then you pick up more paint and apply again. Flat brushes that are larger like this can hold more paint, and so you can go a little bit longer than if you're using a detail brush. This is definitely something that beginner artists need to learn and it takes a little while. Just getting the feel of your brush and how much paint you need to add, how much water you need to leave on your brush, it's just something that comes with practice. A few other factors that plays into this is how dry your room is. If you're below a fan, that can also speed up the drying process. If it's hot or if you're using poor quality paint. Down below, I have the paints that I'm using right now. I'm starting to add more raw sienna to the left side because it's going to get a little bit lighter so I'll have less black in that part. I'm also going to add just a little bit of white to this mixture just because like we did with our gray I want to make that lighter on the left side. Right. I'm not going to focus too much on it being perfectly blended because we're going to be having our grass over top of that. All right, so I'm going to touch up my background because I'm going to let this part of the background dry. I'm going to add more yellow to this right side to really pull out those purples. And then we'll let that dry and go in with our grass and our bubbles. Okay, so lots of steps here. So I'm going to mix, I'm basically just going to repeat the steps we did at the very beginning with my permanent red and lots of orange. I don't need as much red 
This is just applying the same colors. I'm not trying to change the colors here aside from adding more yellow to that side. And I'm just trying to add more coats so that it's a really bright, rich color. A note I want to make here is you never have to make your background for your dog portrait so elaborate. You don't have to have multiple colors or multiple objects in the background. You can simply just add a plain color background or you can add maybe three or four colors to it. It's entirely up to you. I want to make my background really detailed. I really like to do that in my dog portraits, but if you're new and it's a little intimidating, just know that you don't have to do that. You can add simply white to your background if you please. All right, and so now I'm just going to add more orange and a little bit of yellow into this as I move over to the right side. And I'm just going to mix that in with this color I just had. Blending is only possible when your paintbrush is wet, and it really helps too to also have a little bit of dampness on your canvas. I'm just remixing more of this color as I move to the right. That's a little too, needs more orange and more yellow to that. And this is also where we added some white, so I'm going to pull in some white here as well. Very careful about not going over a pup, but it's not the end of the world if we have to go back with our blues. All right, so yeah, I'm just going to continue adding more yellow and white. I do want to add more yellow to this side of the canvas. I want to pull out those purples. And I want to be able to add some yellow to my bubbles because I really just think that'll bring more life to this painting. Now here's a little tip for blending. 
I just applied water to my brush and then dried it off so that it's just clean and damp. And while those two colors are, are wet and my brush is wet, I can actually blend that directly on my canvas pretty nicely without having to add more paint. If you're having trouble blending, and you can do it again with any other color, just make sure you have a clean, damp brush. All right, friends, so now we're gonna work on our grass. This grass is a lot easier than you think. I'm gonna make sure I have a flat brush for this, either a medium flat brush or a small flat brush. I'm using the uh, Benisi brand brushes right now and fine touch brushes, which I have linked down below. So for the colors we're gonna use, I'm going to lay down a base of dark, blue, of a dark green with phthalo blue and cadmium yellow. And how I like to make grass, it's kind of interesting, but I'll just place down dark green where I want to place the grass. So I think I want to place grass kind of out in the foreground a little bit more. And I'm just going to apply dark green. I'm not really creating that texture yet. I did this with my shoe painting that I showed at the very beginning, and it worked very well. So just in the areas where I'm going to apply grass, and I'll probably put some grass over here just a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in more yellow to that to brighten it up. I want to mix a good amount because I'm going to start making the strands or the blades of grass. All right, so all I'm going to do is I'm simply with a small amount of paint. I don't want to have too much paint in my brush because I want that flat edge to be thin. This is kind of how I make fur. And I'm just going to, that's actually a little bit too light. I think I'm going to darken that up a little bit. If you need to darken it, just add more blue. And now I'm just gonna cluster these lines going in kind of all different directions because grass doesn't just sit perfectly vertical. And it's gonna be where I placed that dark green. Some blades of grass are taller than others, some are shorter, but I'm just gonna kind of work from up all the way down. And it, it actually helps, it looks correct if we leave some of this dark green on the uh, behind it. However, we want to make sure we, we cover the line of dark green. Do you know how it kind of leaves a line from where it meets the brown? I want to cover that up as best I can with all the layers of grass that I add. And as I move to the left side, I'm going to add in more yellow to my grass because it's getting a little bit more light there. So here I go, just adding a little bit more yellow, keeping my brush thin with paint. 
If you notice, I'm actually flattening it out by pushing down on that flat edge so that it keeps that edge flat. Another artist tip for when it comes to painting grass is not only is it important to make sure you keep that flat edge of your flat brush flat by pushing it down on that edge, but also not applying too much pressure to your brush. You want to have these blades of grass being a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, and going in different directions, but applying an even amount of pressure to it so it's only just hitting the tip of that edge, okay? You're not pushing it down. Usually grass is thin and you don't wanna make them too thick. Don't want to forget the grass over here up top. Oh, it looks so nice, doesn't it? With that against that deep uh, orange. Alright, so now I'm going to add another layer over top some of these, like I want the, this to be a little bit lighter green, so I'm going to add quite a few layers of that green, just adding in more yellow. I just want to note here in the next section, we're going to be darkening up the area right below the dog's arm, just because it looks a little too light in value. And so I'm going to have to redo some of these blades of grass. That's going to happen in your pet portrait. You're going to have to redo things, especially if you're starting out. I've learned not to be afraid of mistakes because they're just not permanent with acrylics. We can simply let it dry and then rework it with some more layers. It may take a little patience and endurance, but over time we'll get it and we learn something in the process. All right, now to add some more contrast, I think I wanna darken this area up. There's, it's just too light right now. So I wanna mix in more of my raw sienna and black. So I'm just gonna make this darker with a detail brush, making this look like dirt, dark dirt. try and cut in around my grass, blades of grass. I don't want to go over them too much, if at all. As well as right here around the mouth.
I went over some of that, the grass. That's okay though. Didn't want to have to do that, but I think I'm going to have to bring that down just a little bit more over top some of that grass and then redo that grass. It's not the end of the world. I wasn't hoping to do that. I just fixed that up with my large flat brush. I just pulled it down. I'm going to lighten that area up just with a little bit of white and raw sienna. Again, this is a great way to add contrast, just kind of darkening the darkest areas up and then lightening the other opposite areas up. See how I created a little shadow around the mouth here? Just gonna kind of add little indents in that dirt. Not too extreme, but just little ones. Probably put some like right here too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this area dry because I do want to touch up some of those blades of grass down here. And now we're gonna do our bubbles, okay? All right, guys, anytime I'm doing bubbles, I like to use this brush. It's a rigger brush. This is um, by Fine Touch, and it's got these really long, thin bristles. I like to make sure it's clean and damp before uh, I start to pull in some paint. And all I use first is white. I'm just going to use white to create the outline of all the bubbles, and I'll make them scattered all over. This little guy is going to just be surrounded by all these bubbles. I'm going to have some that are touching and overlapping and then some that are large and small but I just want to keep my brush thin with paint and I just want to glide my brush. I find that I actually have to do two connected C's. I can't always just do it in one full swing. And so I'm just going to lay them down first kind of layering, laying over top the dog. So two connected C's and I'm trying my best to make the width all around the same. I don't want to make one area smaller or, or thicker than the other. But I do want to make bubbles of all different shapes and sizes. It's definitely tricky. I actually got a little bit more white. I'm going to try and fix that mistake by putting another bubble underneath it. Maybe even two. This is one way to fix your mistakes if you're painting bubbles, but you can also let it dry and just remix the background color that we made with our cadmium yellow, our permanent red and white. Just go back to that section if you need a little refresher on colors and you can just paint over it and try again with your white bubbles.
think I'll have one resting on this pup's nose. working on the grass I'm gonna still take some in the grass like the areas of the grass that I know that I'm not gonna have to redo I'm going to apply some bubbles over top kind of want to get a real big bubble right above where this dog's head is that he's just got his eye on. These blades of grass down here, I'm gonna mix up more dark green or like that medium green. And then I'm gonna go in with more of that grass and then we're gonna add color to our bubbles. It really helps to mix colors with a separate brush and then go in with your rigger brush. I find it's easier just because there's such delicate little bristles, it's kind of hard to move that paint around on your paint palette.
All right, I'm gonna do the same thing on the left side, just with a little bit lighter colors. Just a little note here, be patient with this grass. The key really is to add lots and lots of layers of strands of grass. It takes a little while, but over time you'll start to see all those layers pay off and it really looks like grass. So when it comes to painting bubbles, you're going to get colors from the its environment going into them as well as your rainbow colors that you see in the rainbow. So I'm going to start actually putting some of my light yellows into these bubbles and then we're going to go to some of our oranges that have been kind of diluted a bit into these bubbles as well as some blues. And then the ones down here we'll add in some green because it's getting that light reflection from the grass. And I'm gonna again use my rigger brush. I'm gonna mix up the colors though with a flat brush first. All right, clean, damp flat brush. And I'm just gonna mix up a, for these bubbles, which we'll work on, a little bit of this background color here with my white, yellow, and a little bit of orange. That's cadmium yellow, white, and orange. All right, so this is gonna be really fun. We're gonna pull in even more color. And all I'm gonna do, I want this to be kind of diluted, almost like transparent. Well, because bubbles are transparent. So I'm actually having a clean, damp brush with just the smallest amount of paint on my brush. And I'll, along the inner rim, I'm just gonna add this color, kind of like a C again. And I'm going to add just a little bit to both sides. In some bubbles, I'm just going to add it to one side. I, I'm also, as you can see, making this thicker than the line that I made for the outer edge of the bubble. And in some bubbles, I'm going to skip that line and not go all across the white. Does that make sense? I'm kind of leaving a little bit of a gap. I'm gonna smooth that out with my finger. I'm gonna get real messy now. Just gonna thicken that line, smudge it a little bit with my finger. I'm really not applying much paint to my brush. Okay. 
I'll probably add it to this bubble here. But next we're going to mix up a darker orange. I could even get away with this one too. So next I'm going to mix up a darker orange and what I'll do is I'll just add in a little bit of red to this color that we made and some orange. So into that color I mixed up permanent red and orange and we're just going to add a tiny bit to our rigger brush. Okay, and notice I'm making, a, most of my bubbles are having it on the left side because it's facing this part of the, the background. Um, but on these bubbles, I'm gonna be facing a lot of, curving a lot of this color on the right side of the bubble. And the key is just not adding much paint to your brush. Now I notice that I can't really, it can't really see it on that part because the bubble's kind of in that in-between color. So I need to go with a lighter color for those colors to actually stand out over that bubble. So just a little bit of white into this color with a little bit of yellow. And that'll, that'll definitely stand out over top that medium orange. All right, so next we're gonna go into our blues. I'm gonna make a light blue. I'm just gonna mix it up using phalo blue and some white. I don't want this to be too dark over top that yellow background. And I don't wanna add much paint to my brush. So I wanna be careful not to mix in this blue with some of those oranges. Just a little bit is all you need. It's just getting some of that reflection from the dog.
actually adding kind of like dots. Do you see how I did it this one? Instead of curves, I'm kind of actually adding a little bit more just designs, abstract designs to these bubbles. All right, and the last step, guys, for these bubbles is simply going with a clean rigger brush and doing our final little highlights on the bubbles. It's just simply like a little dot, kind of like what we did highlights for the eyes, just with white, nothing else. Now on some of these bubbles, they'll just be a little dot, and others, it'll be more of a thick square shape highlight. Don't overthink it too much. You can also look up bubble reference photos if you wanna get really realistic. But light reflects into bubbles in so many different ways that you can't really go wrong here with the highlights that you add in this step. All right, friends, so we have completed all the steps except for step 12 in the dog painting process. And step 12 is what I call the touch-up phase. It's just fixing up anything in the pet portrait that you may have painted over or missed layers on. A lot of it is repeating the same steps that we've just done in part one and part two. So feel free to go back to part one in case you need a little refresher on colors and how I applied it, where I applied it. But now we're gonna start our review. Now, everything that I go over in this review is also in a free guide that I have linked down below. I also attach this to a separate tutorial I posted last year on my YouTube channel. But so step one, we applied a traceable printout. You can either do a rough sketch of your own or trace it, it's entirely up to you. But don't overthink it. You don't even have to be a master drawler to create a wonderful pet portrait. As you paint, you can add in more layers, you can expand out your sketch, you can take in your sketch. So that's why I don't put too much stress on a perfect sketch. Step two of the dog painting process is to complete your background. Now, with shorter hair dogs like this pit bull, you don't have to worry so much about it being completed because we have the ability to go around that dog at the very end like we did in this tutorial. But if it's a long hair dog or even a medium fur dog, I recommend having your background entirely completed or almost completed because it's very difficult to go around those fur strands at the end. Step three or two, and I say that because you can actually do this step before your background if you want, it's up to you. But in this case, step three would be painting the eyes, nose, and mouth. That means filling in the pupils, filling in the nostrils, outlining the nose, outlining the eyes with black or gray or dark brown, depending on the colors of the dog like we discussed. And then if you have an open mouth, you would apply the layers of your dark medium light to the inside of the mouth. All right, step four is to apply the first layer of your dark tones, the darkest values that is getting the least amount of light on the animal's fur. 
Once you've applied your dark values, then you would add in a little bit lighter color or on a separate paint mixture. That is our medium values. That's step five. Okay, I'll oftentimes pull in white or yellow or orange, just a lighter color into the previous darker value that I mixed and that will be my medium values and that's step five. Step six is completing the connected parts. We didn't have that in this painting, but I talked about it. That includes things like the collar, a leash, balls that the dog's holding in the mouth, animal clothes, anything that's connected to the dog that needs to com be completed, especially before we start getting real in depth, in detail with our fur. And that leads me to step number seven, which is starting to really create that fur-like texture using the flat edge of our flat brush or a rigger brush or liner brush. This is a step that's kind of tied in with our dark, medium, and light values because we are mainly focused on covering up our white in the dark value stage and then we get a little bit more specific with a little bit more definition on that fur in the medium values and then with our light fur that we apply in step eight that is when we are really getting slowed down more structured with those tiny little strands of fur this is something that we pay real close attention to in medium and long furred animals like German Shepherds, Lab Doodles, Huskies, not so much in dogs like Pit Bulls or Rottweilers or even Basset Hounds. The fur texture is not our main focus, but it's still something that we create with those lighter values in step eight. All right, so that leads me to step number nine, which is to repeat those layers of dark, medium, and light. We want to create a range of dark values, a range of medium values, and a range of light values to create that three-dimensional look. Now, step 10 is what I call the final details phase, and that's actually just the area around where we're gonna be applying whiskers, if you see whiskers in your pet portrait. So that's getting those final layers applied around the snout, around the nose, around the neck, and this also includes the eyes where we ended up letting the color in the eyes dry so that we could then add the final details and highlights to the eyes. And once that's dried, that leads us to step number 11, which is to paint in the whiskers. Sometimes whiskers are so obvious on dogs, but then in others like this case, we hardly see it. So that's up to you whether you feel comfortable enough or want to add them, it's up to the artist. And the last step of the dog painting process is this one we're working on right now, our touch-ups phase. Just repeating the same steps that we've gone over, adding more layers, taking out more layers, just making it look like a final painting. Now, if you're having trouble choosing a background color for your dog portrait, or painting whiskers, or noses, or figuring out value, I have what's called the Online Animal Art Masterclass for beginners all the way through professional level artists, where I teach creatives how to paint their dog, cat, and other wildlife from around the world. I even have videos for each one of these steps that I've just gone over, and I go over these things in much more depth and detail. Students also get unlimited email access where they can just send me reference photos and I can direct them on more of a one-on-one -on -one basis. So here until the very end of this tutorial, I'll just be working on my final details phase, step 12. And so guys, you might have similar touch-ups that you're doing. You might have entirely different ones that you'll need to add to make your painting your own. Feel free to leave in the comment section below what you thought of this tutorial, any feedback you have, or any questions you have. I'm happy to answer them. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye!